August 1970, one particular person claimed that he'd actually saw the vampire sleep in the coffin with its mouth was still gorged with blood. He was about to stake it, but he was talked out of it by the other people, and so he just performed an exorcism. Satan, get ye behind me and be gone from this place forever. The vampire had now taken up refuge in an old Gothic mansion in Crouch End, and they claimed to have discovered it. They dragged the coffin out into the overgrown garden. Then the person claimed he drove his wooden stake through its heart. The thing gave out an almighty roar, as if from the bowels of hell. The vampire turned to a sluggish slime and reverse her in the bottom of the casket. They then fetched a can of petrol from the car and incinerated it. End of Highgate Vampire. So we went around to the um, area, found the house. One old lady told us that you know, she'd lived in, in the area for many, many years. We asked her if she remembered a scream as if from the bowels of hell and fires being lit. She didn't remember the scream as if from the bowels of hell, but she doesn't remember any coffins being lit. I do accept the existence of some entities that can remain earthbound. There's the existence of the incubus and the succubus, which go back decades, centuries. I've interviewed quite a few people who've had this experience. Sleeping people at night, they suddenly wake them up and people find themselves absolutely paralysed. People become anemic. There's a loss of appetite, are prone to bouts of sleepwalking and also vivid nightmares. It isn't hardly ever reported in print anymore, but I've met women telling me about this. It still happens. The point is that when Bram Stoker came to write Dracula, I am quite convinced he was aware of all these symptoms and he turned these entities into blood-sucking vampires. Ghosts can be a few things. They can be the actual spirit of a deceased person that has failed so far to make it over to the other side. Or it can be a kind of psychic memory. You seem to have what they call psychic tape recordings. Because of how these ley lines work and allowing these, these energies to come forth, these thoughts are still imprinted there. These thoughts are there. And if one is in a receptive mood, one can pick up that atmosphere and a figure. You had the modern mythology promoted by the media generally, which actually that allowed a sort of um, a big myth to build up. The Highgate Cemetery evokes a feeling of atmospheric dread, and with the right priming, anyone can think or believe that there is a vampire, or indeed any kind of supernatural being at large in that cemetery. People who believing in something can create thought forms, what in Tibet they call tulpas, that could actually take on a kind of life of their own. Maybe that's what the ancient Egyptians do, they, they, they created guardians for the tombs. More and more people are going to hear the story, more and more, more people are going to be influenced, and more and more people are going to be likely to actually see it. Just possibly the spirit could get energy from people believing in it. If you got rid of the modern media, I believe people would still see spirits from time to time. But I don't believe the media is going to go away, so yes, you probably are going to have these panics again and again. If it wasn't for the media, um, David wouldn't be as bad as he's painted. Certainly with other people's involvement. Um, and possibly David's personality at the time he wanted to um, be a bit rebellious, I don't know. Maybe he just encouraged it, perhaps. I don't have any regrets about anything I do. I always believe life is part of the learning process. You know, I'd just like to be considered as a disciple of life. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm.